bright duty every student matters hello students i am shivika khurana and we now we will be discussing the chapter metal and non metals in this chapter we will be talking about the physical properties the chemical properties of metals and non metals we will also study how metals are extracted from their ores which are present in the earth's crust all the elements around us can be classified into metals or non metals a few of them do exist and show properties of both they are called as metalloids but in this chapter we are specifically concerned with the properties of metals and non metals so let's begin by studying their physical properties the first physical property we have is appearance now by appearance it means how does the element look to us so to do this we'll take an activity that is given in the book you take any metal sample you can take iron copper magnesium aluminum or any metal easily available to you and you clean its surface with sandpaper to remove all the uh, impurities or any corrosion that has formed on the surface once you do that you observe its surface you will see that all metals are lustrous that is they are shiny in nature so metals are lustrous in appearance and this property is called as metallic luster non metals on the other hand are not lustrous so when you see the surface of non metals you will realize that they do not shine and that is why they are not lustrous the next property that we have is the state by state i mean is the, does that element exist in solid liquid or gaseous state so metals usually are solid at room temperature with an exception of mercury mercury as you seen in thermometers is liquid so if you've seen a, a mercury thermometer you see that inside the thermometer there's a tube in which mercury rises or falls to show temperature so mercury is liquid and that's the exception but generally uh, all metals are solid at room temperature in this activity we take aluminum zinc iron copper metal in the form of thin pieces to perform this activity note the appearance of each metal now rub their surface with sandpaper again to know their appearances by uh, uh, one after the other you rub all i uh, rub and clean all the metals you find that the metal in pure state has a shining surface this is the property of metallic luster try to cut each metal with a sharp knife when you try to cut the metals you will be unable to do so in case of zinc copper aluminum or iron so you find that metals in the pure state are hard and cannot be cut with a knife now hold a piece of each metal in the bunsen burner frame uh, with your hand and carefully do so you find that it is not possible to hold the metal while in flame thus we can say that the metals are good conductor of heat on account of this property metals are used for making cooking utensils now set up an electric circuit insert each of the metals in between the clamps a and b and switch the circuit to check if it conducts electricity or not we check each different uh, each metal one by one and we see that in case of aluminum and zinc the bulb goes on which means they are good conductors of electricity similar results are also seen with iron and with the final case of copper so this shows that all metals are good conductors of electricity because the glowing bulb suggests that they are conducting electricity in this circuit now strike each of the metal piece with some hard surface you will observe that all of them produce a peculiar metallic sound we can say that these metals are sonorous so we have seen these few properties of uh, metals now for the next property place small sample of metal on iron block and hammer it number of times with a hammer repeat the procedure with other metals what you will observe here in by beating them with hammer is that they uh, tend to become flattened into a sheet like structure so this ability of a metal piece to get flattened into a, uh, and be beaten into sheet like structures is called as malleability do you know that gold and silver are the most malleable metals thin leaves of gold and silver are even used for de decorating sweets which is called as charak in hindi and is also used to make ayurvedic medicines 
they are all they can also be used to form wires and uh, hence they are uh, also called ductile because of their ability to form wires they are also used in making electric circuits except for zinc all metals are re are readily available in the form of wires that is they are all ductile so the uh, you, using this activity we are able to understand certain properties of metals we are able to see they are good conductors of heat and electricity they are ductile they are sonorous they are hard and they cannot be cut through with a knife they are also lustrous so these are the properties of almost all metals when we talk about non metals non metals are either solid like example of carbon which can exist as graphite or diamond or sulfur which are this is again a solid but they can also be gaseous like oxygen hydrogen or nitrogen which exist in the air in gaseous form there there's also an exception here of bromine which exists in the third form which is liquid solid form in non metals we have carbon and sulfur for gaseous form we have oxygen hydrogen nitrogen as examples and uh, the exception to both these states is uh, bromine which exists as liquid the next property is of hardness so by hardness we mean uh, that is that element strong enough uh, to bear the external force so when we see this uh, for to do this we will take up another activity in this activity you take various metal samples and you take up a sharp knife you try to cut all the metals with the sharp knife you will observe that you are unable to cut metals like aluminium iron magnesium or copper with a knife but there are exceptions sodium potassium and lithium or the alkali metals you will be able to cut them with a knife that is because they are relatively softer and they can easily be cut with a sharp knife so metals are usually hard but the exception is of alkali metals Uh, when we talk about non metals very few non metals exist in solid state among those a few of them are soft but there is an exception of diamond so diamond is a form of carbon which is the strongest substance known to man and that is the exception to the general rule of uh, non metals the next property is malleability malleability means that is uh, the property of an element to be able to be hammered down into thin sheets so metals are malleable whereas non metals are not malleable to verify this you can take uh, take up another activity where you take up different uh, metal samples and you try to beat it with a hammer on uh, striking it with hammer again and again you will see that metal will get compressed and it will start forming a sheet like structure but when we apply external force on non metals they break and that is why they are called as brittle they would uh, break under external uh, pressure So metals are malleable in nature and can be beaten down into thin sheets. Gold and silver are the most malleable metals, whereas non-metals are not malleable and are brittle in nature. The next property is ductility. So ductility is the property of an element by which it can be drawn into thin wires. Now, for this, let's observe all the wires that you have around you in the marketplace or in your own household. you will see that all metal uh, all the wires are in fact made up of metals why is that this is because metals are highly ductile metals can be drawn into thin wires easily and that is why they are used in all the electric circuits around you gold and silver are the most ductile metals gold in fact is so ductile that a 2 uh, km long wire can be drawn only from 1 gram of gold so from that tiny amount of gold such a thin wire can be produced this shows how ductile gold is non metals are non ductile and again because they are brittle they will not be able uh, it is not possible to draw them into wires the next property we has is conduction of heat so metals are good conductors of heat to show this we will do an activity for this activity you will need a setup you take a stand a clamp stand on the clamp stand you attach a metal wire you put another burner a burner here and here with the help of wax you stick nails at certain distance so let's label this is a clamp stand
this is a Bunsen burner. We have nails or pins and they are uh, stick to the metal wire with help of wax. You can take a metal rod or a wire. Now when we make this kind of a setup, what you will see is that uh, when the heat is being provided, slowly this nail would fall off. Then eventually this one would fall off and at last this one would also fall off. So what this shows is that metals conduct heat. The heat of the from the Bunsen burner will get conducted and the closer uh, pin would fall off first because the wax would melt with heat, then the next pin and then so on the uh, further next pin. So this activity in which we take uh, we can take up different samples of metal rods, we will see that all metals conduct heat. And that is why metals are good conductors of heat. You will also observe that this uh, rod does not uh, melt. So this rod itself is not affected and this shows that metals also have a high melting point. So metals are also used for making vessels. This is done because uh, metals are good conductor of heat and that is why they can transfer the heat from the source to the food without getting melted in the process itself. Their best conductors of heat are silver and copper and they, are, they can also be drawn into wires and utensils and that is why it is easy to use them. The comparatively poor conductors of heat are uh, mercury and lead. Nonmetals, on the other hand are poor conductors of heat. Now let's talk about conduction of electricity. So uh, metals are good conductors of electricity whereas non-metals are not uh, good conductors of electricity in general cases. So again for this we will do an activity. For this activity we take up a cell. We join the, join the ends of cell uh, with wires and at the end of wires we have clips. Here we have a switch. And again here we have a clip. We also add a bulb in between. So in this activity we have uh, uh, made a circuit. We have a cell, we have a bulb, we have a switch and we have clips of the wire. Now. What we have to do in this activity is that in this gap in the circuit, the gap that we have here, we can put in different kinds of elements and check if they conduct electricity or not. So let's label this gap as AB. In this gap AB, we can insert different metals and non-metals and see if they conduct electricity or not. You will observe that when you put in metals here, the bulb lights up. But when you put in non-metal, the bulb does not light up. This shows that metals conduct electricity, whereas non-metals do not conduct electricity. So the observation is that metals are good conductors of electricity. You can do this by demonstrating this activity. And if you are asked a question regarding this activity, uh, it, is, uh, it is expected that you draw this circuit and you uh, show the observation for different elements when put in the gap AB. Now another question that can be asked is that wires have a coating of PVC. So electric wires are made uh, using copper and uh, other metals but they also have an outer covering of PVC. Now why is that? That is because human body is also a good conductor of electricity and when we come in contact with wire we can get current from the uh, circuit and that could uh, potentially harm us. And that is why there is a covering of a non-conductor around the wire so, so as to protect the humans from coming in contact with the strong electric Non-metals on the other side, uh, side are uh, poor conductors of electricity but we have an exception of graphite. So graphite is also used to make electrodes because uh, as I said it is a good conductor of electricity which is an exception to the general pattern shown by non-metals. The next uh, property is sonority. So metals are sonorous which means that uh, when uh, stuck with another piece they would create a ringing noise. Now as you have seen in the bells in your school. The, when the uh, metal piece gets hit, 
it produces a ringing noise and that is because metals are sonorous. So because metals are sonorous, they are also used to make our school bells. Whereas non-metals on the other hand are non-sonorous. The last property is melting and boiling point. Now metals usually have high melting and high boiling point. But there are certain exceptions. Gallium and cesium have low melting point. Uh, they will even melt when you keep them on your palm from your body heat. So the body heat generated by human beings is enough to melt the metals of gallium and cesium, but all other metals are usually uh, have high melting and boiling point. Whereas non-metals on the other hand have very low uh, melting and boiling point. So these were the pro physical properties of metals and non-metals. Most of them are contrasting in nature and now you have better understanding. Now you will be able to spot a metal and a non-metal based on its properties.